But you know, a lot of young Christians can't discern what's going on in the spirit world. So God says, I gotta give my kids away to speak the wisdom, to give the commands that need to be given. So welcome to the final session, and the title of this session is The Spirit's Language. All right, in this session, I want to answer the question, why has God given us a language that is different than what we can understand? Don't you think it's a good question? I do. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. This is not referring to either of the public category of speaking in tongues. This is talking about praying, all right? When we pray in tongues, we speak directly to God, not to men. Listen to Romans 8, 26. The Holy Spirit helps us in our distress. What's our distress? For we do not even know what we should pray, nor how we should pray. So we don't know what to pray. We don't know how to pray. Have you ever met up with situations like that? Absolutely, there may be a guy that's in Miramar or Cambodia right now who really needs help and he's alone, he's in trouble and we wouldn't know how to pray for him. No one on this earth would know how to pray for him or they wouldn't know what to pray for him, but the Holy Spirit does. Oh my goodness, now you're getting a little glimpse of where we're going, all right? Let me give you a little, another little glimpse. If I walk into the President of the United States office, right? I walk right into the Oval Office. Mr. President, how do you do, sir? Can I communicate to him on his level? No. He knows so many things about the security of the United States, what's going on in the government. He's going to have to come down and talk to me on my level. Well, when I walk into the king of the universe's office, if I can only pray in English, then I can only communicate to God on my level. God says, I don't want this with my kids. I want my kids able to go into deep fellowship to be able to communicate to me on my level. So God says, I'm going to give you help. His name's the Holy Spirit. Do you know there's many times I'm praying in the Holy Spirit that it's English? Some people think the only time you pray in the Spirit is when you're praying in an unknown language. No, there's times I'll pray in the unknown language and all of a sudden I'll pray for the interpretation. Here comes English. Because what's happening? I'm getting what the Holy Spirit's giving me, and it's in English. Are you with me? So, can you understand that why would the President of the United States not want to tell me about all the securities? I could be a spy. He doesn't want that information getting into the wrong hand, correct? Well, tongues keep the enemy from knowing what's going on. How many of you know we're in a battle? We're in a war. Come on, talk to me. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, we speak God's secret wisdom. It's secret. Why is it secret? Hey, come on. Matt, you were in the army. Matt, you understand that there is language that the military has to have over the radios. And they have to say, Papa Bear, Papa Bear. This is Child Bear, Child Bear, or whatever you guys say. <laughs> right? Go to Alpha 1. Do this. Why? Because the enemy can get in on those lines and understand what the strategy is. Hey, look at the Denver Broncos. Our Peyton Manning, man. He's sitting there, and all of a sudden, he sees the Warriors across the line. They're lining up in a way. Uh-oh, they're going to take my head off. So he goes, Omaha, Omaha. You ever hear him say, Omaha, Omaha? What in the world does Omaha have to do with football? It's a secret code language that everybody on his team understands. So God, the Holy Spirit, gives us this secret wisdom, right? He says a wisdom that has been hidden, that God destined for our glory before the time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He's specifically talking about the fact that if that wisdom, that revealed knowledge would have been given to the enemy, right? The enemy wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. So God had to keep it secret. Well, there's more things than just the crucifixion that God doesn't want to know. And let me tell you something. You know, the enemy could be mounting an attack against one of you. And he's got all these demons in place. And he's moved on people. And he's going to do something devastating. And you know what? God puts it in the heart of your mama. And she gets on her knees. And she starts praying in the Holy Ghost. You know what? And she's praying in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, a barrage of angels show up and wipe out that demonic force. And nothing happens to you, baby. I like that. Oh, my goodness. That's why Paul said, I wish you all spoke in tongues. 
Are you getting that? So so you're supposed to know what's going on in the spirit world. We don't even know what's going on. I'm not Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning's good. He can discern what's going on. But you know, a lot of young Christians can't discern what's going on in the spirit world. So God says, I got to give my kids away to speak the wisdom, to give the commands that need to be given. Because you got to remember, God put man in charge of the earth. You know, God doesn't move on the earth unless it comes to the mouth of somebody. You ever notice Paul said, though I speak in the tongue of men and angels? Yeah. There have been times when I've been praying in tongues and I know that the Holy Spirit is giving me commands for angels to do things. Wow. Whole atmospheres have changed in churches because I'm giving those words and I'm like, ooh, something's happening here. Because I feel that authority rise up. Are you with me? We got to have this back in the church. Are you with me? We got to have it. If the apostles needed it, why wouldn't we need it? Are you with me? Amen. I said, are you with me again? Tongues are also the main purpose for intimacy. My wife and I have been together so long, we've developed our own little, little language. I could say CBIO, and my wife would know what I just said. None of you would go, what are you talking about? CBOI, excuse me, I said it wrong. Because it's been a while since we had it. When we first got married, everything was Outreach International. All the ministries were Outreach International. You know what we did, Shannon? We started Cuddle Bunny Outreach International. So I could look at Lisa and go, CBOI, and she'd know I'm looking for a hug. I'm looking for a kiss. Okay? That was our language of intimacy. Are you getting this? <laughs> And so, you know, you know, Lisa can give me one look. She can say something in a, in a group, and I'm knowing, oh, my goodness, she's not happy with something, or she really is delighted in something. And I'm picking it up, and nobody else is. Why? Because we got a language. Are you with me? Uh, so it is also meant our tongues to develop intimacy with God, because you know what? If I can only talk to him on my level, how can I go to the deep things of God? How can I really get intimate with him? This is why Dr. Cho says 90% of my two hours in prayer every day is spent praying in tongues because you go to a depth of intimacy. You know it here. Somebody says, yeah, but John, I don't understand what I'm praying. The Bible says, pray that you interpret. Yeah. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. For when I pray in a tongue, Paul says, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. You don't know what you're saying. That's why he said in the previous verse, let him who speaks or pray in a tongue, pray that he may interpret. Amen. When I pray or commune with God in tongues, I ask God to give me the interpretation. Then do you know what happened? Ideas, wisdom, teaching simply come bubbling up. The best way I know how to describe it, it's almost like something's hidden in the depths of the sea and a rock comes and these air bubbles start floating up. That's what happens. Ideas, messages, things, in the revelation in the Bible. I get to a scripture and I go, Lord, I don't get that. And then I'll just say, Holy Spirit, teach me. And I'll start praying in tongues. Now, does it, does it come right then? Usually doesn't. It usually comes when I'm driving later or in a shower later on or playing golf later on. All of a sudden, I go, bam, that's it. And some of these revelations have come because why? Spending time praying in the Holy Ghost. See, we are a results-oriented people. We want to see quick results right now. You have to understand, when you pray in the Spirit, you are investing in what's going to come later. That wisdom's going to bubble up. Are you with me? It takes more faith to pray in tongues to go to that level of intimacy than it does for you to just do it in English. But don't get me wrong. Paul said, I'll pray in understanding. I'll pray in English. I'll pray in the Spirit. I'll sing in the Spirit in English. In the understanding, I'll sing in the Spirit. You got it? He's saying, do both. Do both, baby. Amen? Because why? When I pray in English, it edifies my mind. It builds my mind. It, it, it gets softens my mind. Are you with me? It gets me really emotional about the Holy Spirit and about Jesus and about the Father. You understand what I'm talking about? It gets me emotional about my kids. When I'm praying for my sons in English, it gets me, oh, I love Addison so much. I love Austin. I just love Alex so much. And, and, and so that's good. you got to pray in English too. You understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Okay. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The Holy Spirit does not speak to our heads. He speaks to our spirits. That's what that says. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's where he illuminates. Are you with me? He speaks to our spirits. All right? As we pray in the spirit and ask for interpretation, just as I said, it's like bubbles being released and they start floating up into our soul. You got it? And so that's where the Holy Spirit speaks. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5. Counsel. Everybody say counsel. Counsel. 
What is counsel? I need advice. I need to know what to do. Listen to this carefully. Now I'm going to go through a string of scriptures and you better listen to all these. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. But the man or the woman of understanding will draw it out. So counsel. The Holy Spirit is the counselor. Yeah. Counsel. His counsel in your heart is like deep water. But the man or the woman of understanding are the only ones who can draw it out. How do we draw it out? Jesus said in John 7, anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scripture declares rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters, right? <sighs> is this not good? What scripture would he's talking about? He said, as the scripture says, he's talking about Isaiah 12, 3, where it says, with joy, you will drink deeply from the fountains of salvation, right? Okay, so according to Proverbs, the water coming out of our heart is the counsel or the mysteries or the secret wisdom of God. And Jesus tells us plainly, the source is the Holy Spirit, right? He knows all things, the deep things of God, correct? Right? Okay, so he is the fountain of living water. And if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we put this all together. We speak the wisdom or counsel of God in a mystery. Now listen to the word mystery. It does not mean mysterious like our English word. It is the Greek word mysterion, which means hidden or not fully manifested yet wisdom. Are you with me? Picture it like this. A waiter comes, he puts a plate in front of me. If you're in a fancy restaurant, they got a cover, right? I've been in restaurants before where they bring them all out. There's four of us sitting at the table. There's a cover and four waiters all of a sudden go, voila, what happened? They just revealed the mystery. It was there. It's sitting right in front of me, but it's covered. It's hidden to me. When he lifts the cover, it gets revealed. Mystery doesn't mean mysterious. It means truth that has not yet been revealed to your understanding. We speak wisdom or counsel of God in a mystery that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual with spiritual. Now listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 too, and put it all together. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. Counsel, my, my, mysterious counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters. The man of understanding draws it out. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We speak hidden mystery, which the Holy Spirit speaks. He who speaks in a tongue speaks what? Mysteries. All right? So that's how the man or the woman of understanding. Many times, let me help you, let me help you with, with, with what I'm saying here. Many, many times I've, been, I've, I've come to these scriptures, like I said before, not understood it. And I'll start praying in the spirit and the understanding will come. Numerous times I've been writing a book and I'm, I'm all of a sudden I feel like I hit a wall. I just, I'm like, uh, I don't know what else to do. So I get up and I start walking back and forth in my hotel room and all of a sudden here comes another gusher. And then I sit down and start writing again, sometimes for hours. When I was a single man, it was a mystery to me on who I should marry. It was a total mystery. I know I really, really like this girl named Lisa Toscano. I know I'm really attracted to her. I love her personality, but I want the girl that, you know, God selects. So I said to Lisa, she and I, what we did, we were away from each other. She was in Arizona. I was in Dallas. I said, let's pray in the Holy Spirit 30 minutes every day for 30 days. And so we did that 30 minutes every day for 30 days. And you know what? I said, listen in your heart. I said, if you feel like a, a gnawing, scratching, then I said, God's trying to get our attention. This, this isn't right. I said, but if you feel a velvet feeling, that's the Holy Spirit bearing witness. Now listen to me carefully. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. Right. Then he tells how he leads. For the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. Mm -hmm. This is the prime way, primary way the Holy Spirit leads us, is by the witness. You ever feel like you were going to do something and inside you felt like there was a gnawing, right. yeah. uncomfortable, yeah. something's eating away at your inside and you're like, what's wrong? I mean, it's fine. I've gone over there before. I want to go over there. That's the Holy Spirit saying, don't go. Yeah. If you ever feel like you're going somewhere and you feel this real velvet feeling inside, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, Colossians says. In the Amplified, it says rule like an umpire. Right. That's the Holy Spirit saying, this is me. Yes. This is me. So good. 
Okay? There have been decisions I've made in this ministry that I went off of that. I prayed in the spirit. I had a decision to make. I felt the peace, the velvet. I didn't hear. If I had to write a letter, I would have had to say it seemed good to the Holy Spirit in me that we do this. Okay? Because he didn't speak to me. Now, on this curriculum about the Holy Spirit, he spoke to me. Because I was going to preach on something else. I had another message. Our whole team had come up with the best title, and we're still going to do it, hopefully. But when I went on this fast, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to talk about this. So I changed everything. Had the agreement of my son Addison and my wife Lisa. They're, they're kind of like, I look to them for confirmation because the same Holy Spirit in them was saying, yeah, we feel this is right. We feel you need to speak on the Holy Spirit. Many decisions are made off of that. I'll hit, a, I'll hit something. I'll just start praying the Spirit. I got that velvet. I'm going, okay. Mm -hmm. Or then I got that check and I'm going, uh-uh, I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not doing it. Something's not right. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I can frustrate people around here. Because why? I have made a firm commitment that I won't do anything unless I know I have the Holy Spirit's at least witness on a, on a new move. Right. In other words, he'll give you a sphere where you know you're supposed to, like, I don't sit there and say, Sherry, let me pray about this church in this city. Why? Because I know God has already told me, go to America, bring what I've entrusted to you to the most strategic places. I don't feel any check. I'm not looking for any. I'm just like, okay, I'll go there. Yeah. But when, when, when it came to like, when it came to getting our curriculums into the hands of pastors all over the world, God had to give me a word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? Because now you're going outside of the sphere. I was in the English speaking world. 20, 20 some thousand churches were using our curriculums. Then God says, I want you to get your curriculums into the hands of people all over the world. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in a meeting with Addison and Lisa, and I say, I'm going to give away 250,000 books to pastors next year. Oh, that, that, that meeting got intense. <clears throat> but what was I doing? I really didn't have a word from God on that. The Holy Spirit didn't say, I want you to do under 250,000. But it was in line with what he said six months earlier, where he said, I'm, I'm, I'm sending you now to the world. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got to learn how he communicates. You know, when you walk with somebody for years and years, you learn how they communicate. Right. There's some things Lisa says to me directly, bluntly, and boldly. There's other things she gives me a hint, and I get it. Thank God I get it now. <laughs> Are you with me? All right. You know, there's been mysteries before. How, why did this happen? Why did I go through this? And I didn't understand why. I pray in the Spirit, get in the Bible, and all of a sudden I realize, oh, this is why it happened. You see what I'm saying? To be very honest with you, I, I, I just need to say this because it's so important that I say this. This is the way the Holy Spirit deals with me. And I, 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 I think I've got the Spirit of God on this, so I'm going to say it. I find my prayer time is so much more effective in the morning, so much more, when I first read the Scripture. And the Lord, the way He showed it to me, is it kind of gets the hook up. It's like the Word of God washes away any of the cloud, and it gets the hook up. And when I go into my prayer closet in the mornings, I connect so much quicker. Are you with me? Yeah. Um, another thing, another secret. The Bible says God is to be held in reverence by all those around him. Psalm 89, verse 7. Used to be, I used to struggle to get in the presence of God. And then I started just going in and thinking about how awesome he is. Okay, the awesome one just walked in here with me. All of a sudden, there's his presence. I'm like, wow, what's happening? I'm getting into his presence quicker because I'm reverencing him, and he surrounds himself with people who reverence him. Jesus said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He said, come into the presence of God with holy reverence. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Mysteries are things that are hidden to our natural mind. I'm going to say it again. It could be where I go to church. It could be what ministry I'm to be a part of, where I'm to give, what house am I supposed to buy, how I'm supposed to pray effectively for leaders, how I'm supposed to pray effectively for my pastor or my family members. And of course, you know, the list is endless. I'm so glad that God didn't leave us with just being able to pray according to our own understanding yeah, yeah. because I'm so limited on what's going on around. But when I yield to the Holy Spirit, I'll never forget there was a, a person, a pastor that we used to pray together. And I remember one time we knew we were in the Middle East speaking, uh, giving direct, directions. I mean, our tongues changed. I have been in situations before where I'm praying for something and it will go Oriental. It'll go African sometimes. And that's when I know, okay, right now, I've gone from plum praying for myself or my family to somebody else in the world who's in need. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. 
It's what God has given every single one of us. It's our Omaha, Omaha for Peyton Manning thing. It's our, it's our military talk, right? So the enemy is just so frustrated. That's why he fights this so strongly. He would much rather us be isolated, separated, not hooked together by the Spirit. Paul would even say to the churches, hey, I was with you when you were meeting. I wasn't with you there physically, but my spirit was there and I beheld your order. How did he do that? He went there in the spirit. He was praying so diligently in the spirit, God gave him glimpses of what was going on over there. I remember there was a man from the Maasai tribe and he was staying with some friends that lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, these guys that I know. He stayed with them for a month and he would come and regularly report how his family was doing back home. Finally, the hostess said, listen, how, how do you know what's going on with your family? You have no cell phones, you have no, no landlines, nothing in your village in Western Kenya. How do you know what's going on? He said, well, Paul knew what was going on with the Corinthian church. He said, the Lord shows me what's going on with my family members as I pray in the spirit. So he was able to keep in touch with him that way. Are you with me? And so this is what God has given us. The ability to stay connected. Do you know how many times I know my staff, our partners for Messenger International are praying in the spirit for me because I face something that could have been potentially dangerous or bad and Whom I see divine intervention, and I go, I didn't pray about that. Well, either I prayed about it when I was praying in tongues before it happened, or somebody on the staff was praying for me in the Spirit that day, or my wife was praying for me in the Spirit, or my sons were praying for me in the Spirit, or some of our partners were praying for me in the Spirit. That's why I am so thankful for not only financial partners of Messenger International, I'm thankful for prayer partners. And there are people that pray for us and they really pray. And I am so grateful for that. Amen. And it's because of that connection and what we have. And so the area of ministry which weighs most believers down is direction. James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, what to do, what direction to go, let him ask of God. How can we ask perfectly? By praying in the spirit. It works in business. It works in government. It works in education. You, we face situations in our sphere if it's in sales and we don't know what to do. You know what we should do? Pray in the spirit. Close your closet or close your office door. Pray in the spirit because listen to what God says in Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way that you should go. I'm convinced. You know, I'm not called to be a businessman, but if I was a businessman, I would be praying in the spirit a lot. And then I would be making decisions according to the peace in my heart. You understand what I'm saying? And so I know there's some of you in here and that's the way you live. I'm looking at my friends right now and that's the way you live. And that's why you're so blessed. All right. The benefit of praying in tongues. Let me go through it quickly. Number one, it keeps the enemy from knowing information that could be detrimental to our battle with the enemy. Number two, I'm just reviewing right now. Intimacy with God. We can speak to God on his level and really get intimate. Number three, it gives us a way of drawing God's counsel and wisdom for situations we're facing. Number four, you ready? It brings rest and refreshing. Paul said in Corinthians chapter 14, brethren, do not be children in understanding. In the law, it is written. So he's quoting from the Old Testament. With men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. What was he quoting? He was quoting Isaiah's words when Isaiah said in Isaiah 28, 11 and 12, for with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing You know, a friend of mine, he pastors a large church. He was talking to another pastor who pastors a very large church. And the pastor was saying, I'm just ready to leave the ministry. I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm worn out. And my friend looked at him. They were sitting in a restaurant. He said, you've stopped praying in the Holy Spirit, haven't you? And he said, well, uh, uh, uh," he said, come on, talk to me. How much time do you spend praying in the Spirit? Uh, And he started staying. And he said, well, you know, I'm constantly preparing my messages and I've got all the things that are running on with my 15,000 member church and I'm doing this. And he said, are you praying in the spirit? He said, no, to be really honest with you, I'm not. He said, start praying in the spirit. That's the rest. That's the refreshing. Do you know that man now doesn't want to leave ministry anymore? Are you with me? Why is it that Dr. Cho can pastor 830,000 people and not go through spiritual burnout. I can't think of a pastor 
who has more responsibilities on him than Dr. Cho. I mean, really, literally, he's carrying the weight of the world because he was so well respected and received and honored in the world and looked to by so many in the world. He's praying in the spirit. Yeah. Praying in the Spirit. I used to look at Lester Summerall, a great man of God, an apostle I looked up to. I used to pick him up. The guy slept four hours a night. He was writing four books at the same time. He ran circles around the younger guys. I think, how can he have this much energy? Because he got the rest from praying in the Spirit. I'm guaranteeing you, you will not experience burnout as some have. Now, don't get me wrong. We don't abuse our bodies. However, there are people I think that hit burnout that shouldn't hit burnout. And that is because they're not praying in the spirit. I think there are some people that are overworked. They don't honor the Sabbath. They're going to hit burnout. You got to rest. Okay. Because that's one of the 10 commandments that to be honest with you, it was the one commandment that makes no sense. Makes sense not to commit adultery. Makes sense not to kill somebody. It doesn't make sense to take rest. In the Old Testament, it was one solid day. Don't get caught up in that. We're not under constraints anymore. In the New Testament, it's, it's, you've got to make sure you get those times of rest. That's why I play golf. Golf gets me away from ministry, from business, from the things that drain me, and it gets me out there and gets me refreshing. I pray in the Spirit. That's another way I get rest. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Thank you for being with me. Number five, it builds our inner man. 1 Corinthians 14, 4, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Listen to this. Edifies himself. The Greek word edifies is some big, long Greek word that you'll find in your manual. It literally means to construct or build. It means to build a large edifice. You know what Jesus is saying here? When you pray in the Spirit, you literally build up your inner man's capacity to house the presence and the power of God. Do you know Jesus actually used that word when he said, whoever hears my words, I'll liken them to a man who builds his house. That word builds is that same Greek word. So you literally build your inner man, your inner woman, to house the presence and the power of God. I have a friend. His son was very sick. They didn't know what to do. Doctors weren't figuring it out. He went to his office and he prayed in the spirit for five solid hours. He walked out of his office. He went to his house. He said he looked down on his son. He said such authority came out of his mouth. And his son got out of the bed immediately and was fine. It built. Do you see that? Oh, my goodness. It's so amazing. Number six, it builds up our faith. This goes along with the lines with the pastor I just told you about. Jude 20, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Number seven, and this is final, it gives us the ability to worship and give thanks at a much higher level. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 through 7. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say, for you indeed give thanks well. In other words, it is a, even a pure way to worship God. That's why he said, I will sing in the Spirit. What a wonderful, wonderful benefit God has given to us. And I think I do know why the enemy has fought it. He's fought it so hard. It really grieves my heart when I see Christians, leaders, that look down upon people because they are not speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. It's so sad. They're, they're brothers and sisters in Christ. They just haven't learned yet how to yield to the river. It's there. All they have to do is yield to it. God has intended. Jesus made the statement, these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll speak in new tongues. This is why he said, I wish you all spoke with tongues. God wants us all to experience this. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Because I want to prepare you to receive either the, your leader of your class is going to help you and he's going to pray with you like Peter and John did when they came down to Samaria or else if you're by yourself, you can just sh- shut that television off, stop the DVD player and you can pray right there and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. I have so many friends that have been filled with the Spirit right in their own bedroom, right in their office by themselves. I have so many that have received in public settings. It doesn't matter. If you've not spoken in tongues, if you've never asked God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, then you can speak with other tongues. If you have asked God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, then all you have to do is simply learn how to yield. Here's the steps to being filled. Number one, first and foremost, you must have already received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Jesus said the world, unsaved people, cannot receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Number two, there can be no pattern of disobedience in your life. Peter said God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. 
In my experience, I have learned the one that really, really keeps people from receiving from God is unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. I have literally seen people that have asked God to fill them with their Holy Spirit, but yet they still struggle. The Bible's still dry. They're, they're, they don't sense the presence of God. And then they forgive, and what happens is they immediately get filled with the presence of God. They may speak, they may speak and prophesy, or they may speak in tongues, wow. either one. Number three, all you have to do to receive the Holy Spirit is ask. Jesus said, if your son asks for bread from any father from among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much will, more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? That should alleviate any fear. If you ask God for the Holy Spirit, you might think you'll get an evil spirit. You know, I can't even believe some people put that thoughts those thoughts into people's minds. If you ask God for the Holy Spirit, He's not going to give you a demon. He's going to give you His Holy Spirit if you're a... Number five, you have to speak. Please, please hear what I'm about to say. You cannot expect the Holy Spirit to grab your tongue, to grab your mouth, to grab your vocal cords, and make you speak. Because why? He's giving you a free will. You have to yield. The enemy pushes, the Holy Spirit leads. Yes. What the Holy Spirit does is gives you the words. They bubble up like that percolator, like I told you, like those bubbles coming up from deep in the sea. You may see one syllable, one syllable. Just look at it as like a roll of thread in your gut, and you're getting to see just the tip. As you begin to speak in faith, out will come the rest. You have to do it by faith. Let me make this statement. You cannot speak English and Spanish at the exact same time. Right. When, you, when you begin to yield to the Holy Spirit to speak in other tongues, you can't speak English. Just speak what He gives you by faith. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to notice it may start with a stammering lip, but it will eventually be a language. And it may be two languages and three languages and several languages. Right. Just make sure that you absolutely do it in faith and you will receive. Amen. So there are three areas you've got to yield because the whole key is yielding. You got to yield your lips, you got to yield your tongue, and you got to yield your vocal cords. Paul the Apostle made the statement, and I'm going to say it. He wishes that you all spoke with other tongues. Yes. I hope you understand the reason I spent time on these last two sessions is because I believe God wants us to have that lang language to link us together, yes. not as groupies that all can do this, but I'm talking about linking us in the spirit for this warfare that we're going through and taking the nations for Jesus Christ. Yes. Remember, the Holy Spirit, His passion, His desire is to see souls come to Jesus. You're going to find that He's going to lead you to lift up your eyes, to look on the harvest field, to pray for the harvest field, to passionately yearn for souls to be saved because that's His desires. Mm -hmm. You've entered into fellowship with Him. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time with the one I've just touched in introducing to you. Listen and re-listen to these sessions over and over again because faith comes by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. It's repetitive. You may have gotten a lot from the Lord in these sessions, but you know, as you go back through it again, you'll get more and then more and then more because the Word of God never gets stale. It never gets old. Just keep listening to Him. We love you here at Messenger International. I want to encourage you to be faithful and loyal to your local church. It's so important that you get with your pastors, your leaders of your local church. You stand with them in the vision that God has called for your city and stay plugged in. God bless you. It's been an honor to serve you. Let's thank God for what he's given to us.